Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for ARMS. We're a little over a week away from launch now, so I thought I'd help fill the void with another video. And today we're talking about upping your game, learning the intricacies of combat, and in general, tips that will help you come out on top, and most importantly, win your matches. So, here are six tips that will help you dominate in ARMS. If you do enjoy this and you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions and also if you have any other tips from, say, your time playing the Global Test Punch that I perhaps neglected to mention, then by all means, share them down below. Now, kicking things off at number one, if you played the Global Test Punch at all, then I'd hope that you're already aware of this. However, since this is essentially the foundation upon which Arms Combat is built, it's important to ensure that we're all on the same page. What I'm talking about, of course, is the Attack Triangle. Much like Rock, Paper, Scissors, Arms Combat has a very simple combat priority triangle. Punch beats block, block beats guard, and guard beats block. It's simple stuff really, but it's also very important to keep in mind. A lot of the time when playing online, you'll find people cowering behind guard when pinned in a corner, exposing themselves to the inevitable grab, or jumping to dodge a grab attack, as opposed to countering them where they stand. And while at times those strategies can work, as people begin to get more and more familiar with the game, and begin to learn the intricacies of combat, then failing to take advantage of this triangle will very quickly be the difference between winning and losing. A single punch will counter an incoming grab, so despite the fact that you see two arms coming towards you, all you need is a simple one-handed punch to counter it. With this in mind, you can then very easily counter the grab and follow up with a punch, given that the successful counter will leave the opponent open momentarily. This is of course where having a fast attack arm will come in handy. Similarly, knowing when to grab is also very important. Grab spamming is something you'll see only too often online, and while it might work out once or twice if your opponent isn't used to dealing with it, grabs are quite slow and very easy to predict and dodge, which is why you should ideally aim to use them when your opponents are either blocked, stunned, or otherwise unequipped to counter you at that particular moment. So in summary, keep the triangle in mind and try to build your combat strategies around it. Now moving on from there to number two, the guard counter. In fact, this is closely related to the triangle I just spoke about and is especially relevant to anyone blocking. As mentioned, guard is your means to block incoming punches. It's useless against grabs, but punches, even from rush attacks, it'll keep you safe, at least for a while. If you take too many hits while blocking, your guard will break, which is why learning to guard counter is so important. This is something that will take some time getting used to, but if you dash the second a punch hits your guard, you'll do what is known as a guard counter. Essentially, you dash through the punch, and at this point, you then have an opening to follow up. It's important to remember, however, that the counter isn't done for you. After you dash through the attack, it's down to you to follow up. This can be done in a number of ways. You can either follow a counter with a grab, since you'll be closer to your opponent. One of the arms will be temporarily out of the picture, meaning you're better poised to actually land the grab. Alternatively, you can simply follow up with an attack, or if you really want to go the extra mile, if your meter is ready, you can go directly into a rush attack to really punish your opponent. Depending on your combination of arms, this can actually result in some pretty devastating damage numbers. So to reiterate, you first have to block an incoming punch, and the moment it lands, you need to dash. Just remember that the window to follow up is quite small, and if you forget this, then you'll just be left standing there. So practice this, because it's especially useful if someone is trying to force you into a corner, or break your guard. Next up, moving on to number three, get some new arms. Each character starts with three default arms, and depending on who your favorite fighter is, you might like these or you might not. In my video I did the other day, I mentioned how Helix is probably one of the hardest characters to master initially, and that is predominantly due to his base set of arms being quite difficult to get used to. From the menu, you can scroll down to the bottom here and select the Get Arms option. You'll need a minimum of 30 credits, but the more you have to spend, the longer the timer. In this mode, you smash targets to build up your score, and the higher the score, the more boxes that appear. When a box appears, punching it will result in you getting an arm for the character whose icon you see on said box, so in this case, that is an arm for Kid Cobra. Hitting the stopwatch will then extend your time, so even if you're only going with 30 coins for the short timer, you can still get much more out of each run. However, when it comes to earning coins, there's a couple of things worth noting. Of course, if you do play online and you win lots of matches, you'll earn coins in the process at a pretty decent rate. However, you can also earn coins from offline modes too. Going straight into a hoops game or a 1v1 game can net you some coins, and while you might only be earning one or two, if you set the computer player to easy, then you'll be able to win with no problem and pretty quickly. What's more, getting a perfect will give you more points or more coins. 
So a perfect match against an easy opponent is a means to both quickly and easily earn coins. Unfortunately, the armors you earn are random, so it might take a while to get the ones you actually want, but regardless, start doing this early, because if you can get the armors you want for the fighter you like, then you'll be in a much better place overall. Moving on from there to number four, study your replays. Now, yes, if you're just playing arms casually, then you might not have much interest in this. You win a match, cool. You lose a match, better luck next time. But for those of you really looking to up your game, then watching your replays is a great way to improve, especially if you lost. Did you lose because you went for the grab instead of the punch? Did you block for too long exposing yourself? Is your friend constantly beating you and you wanna know why? Well, whenever you finish a match, you can select to watch the replay. You have a few options available like pause and slow motion, but you can also switch cameras to see things from different angles. And if nothing else, the replays actually look pretty awesome. So if you had an especially awesome win, you might just want to watch it back in replay from another angle in slow motion anyway. Whatever the reason, don't forget that this option is available. However, unfortunately, the game doesn't seem to save them, at least not from what I can see. So you need to watch them there and then, otherwise they're gone. Next up, in at number 5, Charge Duration. Charge attacks are an important part of arms since they allow you to access the unique abilities of each arm, whether that be an element like fire or ice, or something more debilitating like shock or stun. There are three main ways to charge your arms. You either hold dash or jump, and that'll then result in what I'm going to call a proper charge. For a character like Min Min, this is the only way you'll actually get her dragon arm out. However, you can also do what I'm going to call a quick charge simply by guarding. Being behind guard for about a second will give you a very quick charge. However, understanding what impacts your charge time is also going to play a big part in your combat strategy. See, off the back of a guard charge or a quick charge, you essentially need to punch almost instantly in order to benefit from the charged arm. Otherwise, it'll wear off and you're back to where you started. But when using dash or jump to charge, then you have a bit more room to breathe. See, depending on how long you hold charge for directly affects how long the arms are charged for. There is, of course, a limit, so you can't just sit there and charge for, say, 30 seconds and then walk around like the Terminator. But notice in this side-by-side -side video, the difference between letting go of the button the second the arms charge up and letting go only when the charge animation finishes. The difference might only be small, but again, it is the difference between having to get that punch out right away or having the freedom to perhaps jump or dash and then go into an attack. Of course, you won't always have the ability to sit there and charge to max. I mean, if you're being rushed down, you have to work with what openings you have. But where possible, the longer you charge, the better off you are. Also don't forget that you don't have to remain still whilst charging. Holding the jump button after a jump will result in you being charged by the time you hit the ground, or holding the dash button after a dash will also allow you to sneak a charge in there too. So there are ways to work it into pretty much every situation, so try to use this as much as possible. And then finally, in at number 6, the Rush Counter. Rush attacks are essentially your super moves in arms. When your meter is maxed, you unleash a Rush attack to do massive damage to your opponent. Of course, you'll want to pick your opening carefully, since it's entirely possible to block these, so the last thing you want to do is waste a Rush attack on a guarding opponent, unless of course their guard is weak, in which case it might be worth it. However, more importantly, Rush attacks can also act as counters. If you activate a Rush attack just as an attack is coming your way, you will counter it on activation. See here the little pink circle or effect to indicate the deflection. This is because I activated my rush attack at just the right time and this is a great way to catch your opponent off guard. Typically if you know someone has max meter you approach them more cautiously. The last thing you want to do is get caught in a full blown rush attack. So as the attacker it's down to you to find ways to work it in. Whether that be through a guard break or a guard counter or again in this case an actual rush counter. If your opponent attacks you, then at that moment they can't also be blocking or grabbing. So a successful rush counter or rush deflect, whatever you want to call it, is a surefire way to ensure that your attack will land. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Those are six tips to help you dominate in your armless matches. Hopefully you found it helpful. As always, if you did, then a like would be greatly appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. And also, if you guys want to join the Arax Gaming Discord, then I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. We've got loads of channels where you can chat about different games. But with ARMS launching next week, then the Nintendo channel is a great way to get some games going. I'll be streaming ARMS once I get back from E3 as well. So be sure to drop by if you want some matches. But until then, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.